Welcome to another episode of On the Path with Cheryl Nemhart. I am so glad that you are with us. This is season two and this is episode two. And I got a question for you. What does resilience look like? What does strength and boldness look like? Well, I have a person coming up that it not only embodies all of those things, but has been one of the biggest inspirations for me in my life. So you are about to find out who my Shiro is in just a moment. See you on the path. with Cheryl Nemhard and I am so excited to be kicking off season two with you as we move into episode two of a brand new season. Thank you so much for joining, for supporting, for tracking with me in season one. Uh, we are on Facebook alone, over 28,000 views and 152 shares, unreal. And we're excited to now be expanding our platform, moving into a podcast as well. Can't wait for you to join us in either vlog or podcast format. I am beyond excited. I, I'm a little geeked out to be straight up honest, a little geeked out because one of my personal sheroes is in the building and uh, she is not uh, unfamiliar to many of you. She's a familiar face. Uh, for many of us, she is a symbol of hope and strength. I'm talking about the powerhouse that is Selena Caesar Chavan. Selena. Hello. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm giddy. I'm, I'm not you. <laughs> I'm like a schoolgirl. What's happening? <laughs> um, I uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, very quickly my interaction with you, Miss yes. Selena. Um, I met this powerhouse. I'd say about two and a half, just under three years ago, and have been swept up in this storm of courage and bravery and fearlessness and uh, boldness and speaking truth to power and uh, and not backing down. And she has been this uh, anthem for so many of us as women, uh, so many of us uh, as humans, uh, mm -hmm. but particularly for me as a woman of color, I have looked to her uh, for strength when I've needed it myself. And uh, mm -hmm. and I'd say I'm pretty strong, so what does yeah. <laughs> that say? Okay then. Um, Selena, I just wanna thank you for coming, first of all. Oh, okay, thank me. you, thank you so much, and thank you for being an inspiration <sighs> to, to me. Because I follow your journey, so whenever I like and I retweet or I love whatever you're doing, it's because I want to just throw you some love oh, yeah. and some support because you're just as inspirational and an inspiration to not just my daughters, but all my kids. So oh, when yeah. I see you, wherever you are on a plane, usually on a plane, <laughs> I'm, I'm at home going... Wow. Let's do this. Let's and, do, let's go. And you know what I love about that? Shouldn't we be doing that for one another? Yes. Like, all the time. Yes. As women especially. But your your success is my success. Like this That's is it. how it works, right? It. When I see you doing your thing, we are making a bigger pie. You're not That's slicing right. into my piece. Come on. Do you see why I have this woman on this vlog? Right. I am so excited. Oh my goodness. I don't even know where to, to begin. <laughs> Okay, so we, we are cheering each other on, we are celebrating each yes. other's successes. I would love to know, um, because we've seen it, optics from the outside, um, just your role in politics, but I'd love for you to formally introduce yourself and kind of your journey into politics, okay. where you landed, some of the yes. things you've done, and just, <laughs> just by way of introduction for those that are just getting to know this incredible person. Yes, so Selena Caesar Chavan um, was the member of parliament for Whitby. Um, Whitby is just a suburb just outside of Toronto and really got into politics. I was doing a MBA 
and I have two of them, but I was doing the second one, and that's a that's a story. I just she said two. I just okay. <laughs> yeah, that there's a Brilliant. story there. There's a story there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I was doing my second one, and I. As part of the, the program, there's this politics component, right. and they talk about political capital. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the professor, I'm looking around at other students, and they're going, yeah, political capital. I'm going, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any political capital. I don't know people in politics that I could turn to to say, hey, can you help me with this piece of legislation? Mm -hmm. Can I inform this policy? Can I help you? develop this piece of legislation to a way that reflects my experiences as a black woman, uh, respects, reflects my community. And I didn't have that say. And I thought, that's ridiculous. I could certainly do that. I had a background. I owned a um, research management company. I know about research. I know about bias. I know how to ask the right questions to inform the research that goes into policy. So why not just do it? Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was December of 2013. So two months later, in February of 2014, I think, hmm, I'm going to join a political party. Wow. And I've always voted liberal, so I, I joined the liberal party for the first time in my life. Never was interested in politics before. Mm -hmm. Joined, and of course, once you join a party, you get these solic solicitation emails. Mm -hmm. And in March of 2014, so this is less than three months later, yeah. I get this email that says, invite her to run. Do you know a woman who is smart and successful and could contribute to the development of Canada on a federal level? And I'm like, yeah, me. me. <laughs> got I got this. I got this. I got this. So I replied back and said, yes, I'm interested in running. And wow. the rest is history. I, I lost the first by-election, won the general election in 2015, served as the wow. parliamentary secretary to Prime Minister Trudeau. Wow. Um, then served at the, as parliamentary secretary to international development mm. and went through a journey of transition within politics and ended up leaving mm -hmm. the Liber Liberal Party and mm -hmm. sitting as an independent for the last few months of my term and my mandate mm -hmm. and um, and then decided that I'm no longer running. Yeah, <laughs> it's been which is probably which is probably one of the bravest decisions you've made, right? Well, you know what? I, I I think in that decision, it was it was really a gut wrenching one for me because I see our young people, and I want them to run. I want them to get involved. They've seen me through this journey, speaking yeah. up on various issues, right. and it was it really made me feel guilty to say, I want you to run, but I'm not running. Mm -hmm. I want you to run, but I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. But I I really want our young people to know, especially our young women to know. That leaving isn't a sign of weakness. Leaving isn't, oh, well, you're leaving the table. I've seen the table. Mm -hmm. I could make the table, but right. why make another one? You carved right. a space, you sat I, at the table, right. I you sat ate there. at the table. I yes. ate there. And then love was no longer being served. Come on. Love was an honor was no longer being served. It wasn't served. being served. Nina Simone, like so, when she sings that song, you I need to that. leave. So can I, can I say then, can I add this? So strength is also knowing when. To leave the table. When to, when to leave anything, when to leave a relationship, when to leave a table, when to leave a, a, a something that is actually yeah. taking from you, Come no on. longer giving you a positive return on investment. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean money. That means emotional, the spiritual, things that, all things, things that, that you value. You. Mm -hmm. Then all you need to go. Serve. And that's okay. And that doesn't mean that we're not friends with the people that are there right. or we hate them right. or all of a sudden we beef right. in. That right. doesn't mean that. It just that's means right. that you're no longer serving right. what I oh, want to. Ingest. I love this because it, it isn't about prominence and position and like no. optics. It's about self care and preservation. No, titles right. come and go. Right. <laughs> but what you have inside when you look at yourself, yeah. when I look at myself, when I look at my daughters, when I look at my son, yeah. when I look at my when I look at me, I want to be able to say, Selena, you didn't just hang on to that title because it was there to hang on to. That's right. Oh, I love this. So this 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 is so perfect. It leads me into this next question: Is yeah. uh, I can only imagine with a journey as full as you've had and experience yeah. with I, with all the highs, like national oh, level, highs. yeah. <laughs> TV wide highs, yeah. almost almost like poli it's political celebrity, right? You're you're a, yeah. you're, a, you're a public figure, and then the lows, the lows which we may know of, and, and many that we don't. Right. I can I, I've got to ask you, what have you learned? I always feel like these are the lessons. Almost like we we lean in close, 
we pull out our pen and paper and we ask the deeper questions. What did you learn about yourself mm -hmm. with this whole experience? Mm -hmm. And beyond that, what did you learn about others? Oh my goodness. So I got into politics in 2015. I was 40 years old, right? Like turning 41. And I thought, I'm grown. Like, <laughs> there's nothing I need to learn about myself. Like, I was an entrepreneur. I, I, like, I failed in university, took myself back up, right. got back together, went back to school, you know, was a successful, like, award-winning entrepreneur, Toronto Board of Trade, Black Business and Professional Association. Like, I was doing stuff, yeah. right? I get into politics. There is nothing I need to learn. Yeah. Except everything about myself right right because you right throughout life if things are going along you're learning what you need to learn in order to do what you need to do next right and so in politics because that the first couple of years were so difficult for me i needed to sort of unpeel the onion and rewind a little bit mm -hmm. and figure out who i was mm -hmm. so who so what did you find out about yourself I think I found out, I, I learned a lot about patience. I learned a lot about faith. Mm. Like you think you know, mm -hmm. but you don't really know until you're on the floor and yeah. you're bawling. And, and you're on the like, ropes. Why are yeah. you doing this? Like what have I done yeah. to the universe that right. is making you do this to me? Right. And it's kind of like, I learned humility. Yeah. I learned the value of understanding that I'm not the smartest person in the room. Come on. What a lesson. Huge. Huge. And I think that's what I learned about other people. Humility is the ability to say in your leadership that you are not the one that always has to be in the front. Right. Yeah. That's that right. What did you learn about others? With others, I think I learned the same as myself that the, you know, in, 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 you know, you read books from Harvard on leadership and managing yourself. I'm reading this book called Managing Yourself. It's the top 10 Harvard Business Review papers. And one of them talks about the mirror test. Hmm. And it's basically your ethics. Can you look at yourself in the mirror? And I think sometimes what I've learned about others and I learned about myself is that you could say, I won't, I won't do this right thing just this once. It's easier to do the right thing 100% of the time than it is to do it 98% of the time. Right. You have to do it Teach. all the time. Teach. And I've learned about others is that when it's convenience, hmm. They could do that 98 right right yeah and that, and integrity is who you are when no one's watching right. right right or what you tell people to compromise on and I just for some of those things I just I couldn't do it and mm -hmm. they were little things they were the the little things that you learned in kindergarten <laughs> like being kind and and not leaving your principles and not leaving your balance and being truthful yeah. and standing up for people. You know, we just came out of this Me Too movement where they were saying believe her, believe her all the time. Yeah. It's like, well, you believe her when it's convenient, but you don't believe her when it's inconvenient. Mm -hmm. And you leave her when it's inconvenient. Come on now. Listen, and so there were there were times that you felt almost like you that superpower of like, I can do this. And then there were times that you were reminded, I'm a woman. Oh, there were times that I was reminded that I'm a woman and that there were times I was reminded that I was a black person. Yeah. yeah. And with that, we won't get, this is obviously, we have to do a part two on this. Yeah, for sure. That's a part two by <laughs> itself. But I will say, I will have to ask, did you blow through those reminders? Or did you, did you, did they make you pause for a minute? when you thought, wow, I'm being reminded, or did you just say, nope? No, I, you know, I was forced to pause hmm. a lot of the time. And I think, you know, because my, and this may be another third episode, but my mental health state, I think you're put in positions at certain times with certain baggage mm -hmm. for a reason. Because yeah. my mental health state, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed very early in the mandate with major depressive disorder. 
And so that makes you pause. Of course. So instead of me blowing by when they say, hey, lady. Or hey, black person. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have to pause and process. Yeah. And not just say, Selena, the entrepreneur from five years ago. Yeah. Not today. We're making money. And keep going. Right. I was forced to pause and say, how do I deal with this? And then how do I deal with this from a perspective? Again, now I'm in a job where I have a responsibility to amplify voices. Right. Right? So it's not just I'm dealing with it for myself. Right. But I have a responsibility to yeah. amplify voices. And if people are making me feel like this, me who is the parliamentary secretary, say, excuse yeah. me, um, but and me who's a member of parliament, me who can't get fired for another four years, how does someone who could get fired, who doesn't have a title, who is just struggling, want to wake up, have to deal yeah. with this stuff yeah. on a daily yeah. basis? Yeah. And it inspired you to commit even more acts of social justice. For sure. Yeah, and, and it made you dig deeper. We saw that. You dug for sure. deep. For sure. Heels in, hard in, like full stance. For sure. And that digging deep comes at a cost. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't know what the repercussions are when you dig deep. So what made you so resilient? Like what 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 drives you? You when we saw uh, obstacles, you know, <laughs> there's a verse uh, in the Bible that says the obstacles seen and unseen. So there was like mm. stuff we saw mm. and there was stuff that Talk to that me. you went through in those closed rooms, on the floor of like your hotel room, whatever's going on, yeah. that we weren't even fully, fully aware of. Yeah. But you, and I, and I love this phrase, but yet she persisted. Yeah. What a quote, what a quote, I love that. Yet yeah. she persisted. What makes you so resilient and what drives you? So I'll start from the, 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 the job and I'll work my way back. So number one, why I was there and how I got there, same answer people serving people i got there because people trusted me and i'm there to serve people yeah. and so my resilience my ability to speak up on mental health on equity issues on justice issues on the differences that make us so beautiful yeah those that those conversations were had because i had a responsibility to people so good I had a responsibility to them. So that's that's number one. Um, the resilience and the drive, number two, is my family. It's a mm -hmm. selfish endeavor when you're trying to make the world a better place when you have children. Of course. <laughs> like you're trying to make it a better place because I got three and if you guys be nice to them, that'll be yeah. kind of cool for me. Yeah. Right? So my family, right? I want, I want this world to be a better place. And then it's my faith. And then I realized that that responsibility, that burden, was not a negative thing. Right. It was love. Yeah, privilege. It was, it was an honor. It was love. Yeah. It was love for, for who I would love yeah. for my people. So yeah. when I did that speech. Yeah. It was an honor to carry That it. was yeah. love. Yeah. When I wrote that love letter to black women, yeah. that was me just saying, I I actually know yeah. what y'all are going through. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. I see you. Yeah. Yeah. I see every. I see the pain. I see the the hurt. I see the struggle, but yeah. I see the joy, the brilliance, the yeah. the possibility, everything. Yeah. And so, what are you supposed to do? Allow myself to fall under that? Come on. Or you stand up in that? I always say, listen. I always say, like, there is a burden that's given to us all. There's that divine call that we have to carry. It's it, the choice is how we posture ourselves. It right. Is, do like we this. do we cower <laughs> under the weight of it? Yeah. Or do we recognize it as a privilege and an honor and that we are actually doing this for others? Yes. And so you you shifted from like uh sort of like, oh me, me, the weight of it. Right. To like I am you know, my Angela says, I come into the room as one, but I stand as ten thousand, yes. right? And so I feel like that's what you were doing. You were standing and speaking as all of us. and leading. Yeah, as all of us, and even when I I left politics, excuse me, and I wrote that my 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 speech, my statement, I wanted people to know that even that act of not running and leaving was not a selfish act. This was an act of resistance. Yeah, 
to say we do not need to accept what is unacceptable. We do, it doesn't matter where you are, who it is, what the circumstance, yeah. we should be able to say not today. Not today. Not today. Not today, not, honey. Not today. I love that. Because at the end of the day, if we are true leaders, it's not about ourselves, like you said, it's about the future generations. Yes. It's about those coming up, right? Yes. Um, so what, when we think about those coming up, the people mm -hmm. that are um, watching, observing, being inspired, like you said, reaching out, yes. um, uh, aligning themselves with your strengths and your weaknesses, saying yes. me too, yes. what is your hope for them? What's your, I'd love to ask you two questions actually, like what is your fear for this next generation? And then what's your hope for this next generation? So what are you, what are you most fearful about? So I will talk about my hope first. Oh, my yeah. hope is this next generation. You know, when they say representation matters, like me being there matters, representation only matters if you have something in which, which matters to you, right? And what matters to me is seeing these young people do amazing things, seeing them protesting climate change, seeing them using their voice when there's you know cuts to education or being empowered and emboldened to create initiatives that they know will save the world. Yeah. They are my hope. Wow. They are absolutely my hope. My fear is that they become cynical. Mm. That's my fear. My fear is that they It's, it's the same reason why I felt guilty leaving politics. My fear is that they see that I went through some stuff and they say, you know, she, even she couldn't do that. It. it doesn't work. It doesn't it work. It'll never work. And honestly, the difference between, and I, what, they, what I want to say to them is, if it's the fear of mine, but what I want to say is, even when you see me and I've struggled, know that when I say I want our young people to run, when I say I want our young people to do things, I want you to do it together. Mm. I want you to tell them right there. <laughs> if, you, if you are a young person or you are around young people this moment. Yeah, this just just don't, don't become cynical. Don't see my example and say, look, it didn't work for her. If you are able to do what you do right now with your friends, your networks, your connections, where you share ideas and build off each other and sort of build that ecosystem with each other, don't ever change that. That is what's gonna carry you forward. You don't go it alone. You use the village. The village pushes you. The village motivates you. It's what you thrive on. And you have an amazing way to do it right now where you're connected not just to the people within your four block radius, you're connected to people around the world. Exchange ideas. Do not let your ego drive what happens next for you. Mm. Let your ability to connect drive what happens next. Because through them and, and you, through you and the ideas that you have and the, the brilliance that you bring, sharing that and making a bigger pie, you will absolutely change the world. That yeah. is my hope. That is yeah. the only place where my hope lies right now. So good. They will make a difference. For sure. And it's a lot of responsibility. I know you're like, they're probably looking away and saying, well, you guys messed it up and now you want us to save the world. Sorry and yes. <laughs> I love it. You know? Right? Now pick pick it up and run. Yes, and, right. and just tell us adults, like move. Out get the out the way. Yeah. Like we need to we need to stop. We need to stop. We need to make space for them. We table. need to make space. Yeah. What do you want your legacy to be? How do you want to be remembered? What do you want to leave? So, you know, People have asked me about, you know, a bucket list, you know, what, what, what's on my bucket list? And I, I've had two things on my bucket list and they were to meet two people. One was to meet Prince and I met him a few times before he passed away. And the second was to meet President Obama. And I got to meet him during this in a major way. Yes. My goodness. Yeah. And so I was talking to someone and she was saying, you know, I was really excited. Oh my gosh, two things on my bucket list are done. Yes. And she turns over and she says, so what do you do now? And I thought, <laughs> thank you for killing the moment for me. <laughs> um, yeah. And, 
you know, she starts saying, would you add something else to your bucket list? And I, I knew immediately, like, no, that's the whole point of his own bucket list. Like, you do it, and then you're done with it. And I said, I want to be someone that somebody else puts on their bucket list. Oh, you got me. All the feels. I just want to live my life in a way, in a way that someone says my goal is to meet, is to meet someone. her, is to meet her, is to talk to her, yeah. is to, and not be like her or to, I, I want to no. be Selena. I want to, because I mean, I only achieved this much, like they should take no, all my knowledge and surpass it. I love this because that meeting moment could be to get inspiration, right? to sit at your feet and learn or to say thank you. Yeah. Thank you for paving the way, yeah. for chopping down the trees, for carving the path. Yeah. Or just to get oh, a I hug. Love that. <laughs> I love Just to get a hug. You know, and, and that's, you know, because I don't know, like, answering that question is difficult because I don't know what's next. All I know is I want it to be as great or greater than the previous. Of course. And where you, you're constantly giving back. So to say my legacy should be one in which I blah, 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 right. or some building named yeah. after me yeah. or some street name like that is superficial yeah i want people to see something in me that says to them that calls them mm -hmm. that calls them to to purpose I and calls it. them to passion and right. says selena seems like she has been called to whatever that purpose <sighs> is and that call has reached my ears and i want to go to her I always say that um, for me, I am not here to make an impression. Mm -hmm. I'm here to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And I want my legacy not to be something, like you said, so much seen and you could point to something. Right. But it's felt. It's felt. It's felt. Yeah. And there was, and, and something has changed because yeah. I was here. She, she was here. Yeah. She was she here. She was here. And there's, there's a, it's not, it doesn't have to be written anywhere, but there was a oh, feeling. I love that. Yeah, she was here. She was here. And because she was here, yes. we are changed. Right. And made better. I'm made better for just sitting beside this person. Oh my gosh. I've changed by the last 30 minutes. I hope you were changed, Selena. Oh my goodness. I love you, you know. <laughs> I love you. It's going to get really awkward in two seconds. Okay. But, um, Selena, I want to thank you. Um, for this part of the journey, um, if 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 we know and we know for sure, you know, like Oprah says, what do you know for sure? We know that you're in mid swing. We know that the best is yet to come. That the chapter chapters are still being written. And if this is only midstream, <laughs> why <Watch out> not? <laughs> uh, so for so for those that have been inspired thus far, using that old phrase. Can I say thank you? Thank you for taking the stripes. Thank you for the lashes. Thank you for the stones that were thrown at you and for the ones that you catch and the, for the ones that you even allowed to hit you so that they wouldn't hit us. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for wearing your femaleness and your blackness as a robe of honor. Yes. And not as a scar and a yes. wound. Yes. I feel like in these moments, we don't praise people enough. And I just, I don't mean to make you cry, but I, I many people have said, Cheryl, you inspire me for this, that, and the other. Can I say that you are my bucket list? <laughs> you are the person that if I could sit with for a few minutes, I know I could run on. Yeah. That and uh that's me, especially today. Absolutely. Okay. And uh there are more, you know, um I'm reminded of this again, I'm a church girl, y'all have to forgive me. There was a moment Joshua was like, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, and God said, Greater are them that are for you mm -hmm. than they that are against you. you. So stand up and fight. Fight bravely and know that there are so many that are for you. And we cannot wait to see what comes next. I'm going to wipe my tears while you think ah! Miss Selena, um, a powerhouse warrior, Shiro, and, um, and teacher. I hope you learned some things today. I certainly was inspired. And we need to have her back because we got to talk about uh, what it looks like underneath that whole journey of healing and mental health. Oh, yeah. we, need, we need to honor it and we need to give it its own, its own space. So until then, 
keep learning. I'm going to wipe a tear. <laughs> keep living. Keep loving. And I'll see you